back in the house. We're back with Sunday service. No idea what was happening there. Let me know if you're back. Shall we continue? Shall we not? Hello, are you joining me again? My absolute apologies. I've turned the Wi-Fi off and yes, I've gone on to the data. Um, I'm not quite sure what's been happening lately, but each and every time I've gone live from the kitchen, I've had the same problem. So, I'm not quite sure what's happening. I need to have a look at it, don't I? I was supposed to be on the best Wi-Fi, the best speed. Clearly not. So, are you all joining me again? Because uh, we were halfway through um, a dear Antonelli there. So, I really don't believe, let me just say, that if your marriage has broken down, that you should punish the children. Therefore, you know, your husband's family or your wife's family, they shouldn't go without seeing the children on a regular basis. Uh, the children certainly shouldn't suffer. It's adult problems, so you shouldn't bring the children into it. Um, so you're hoping to fix your marriage, and that's great. You know, that's great. A lot of people couldn't do that after the husband had cheated. But, you know, God bless you. I hope you can. I hope you can find the trust there. Because without trust, there's no relationship. So tell your mother-in-law... You know, I accept your apology. I was just angry. I wasn't thinking straight. I want to work on my marriage with your son. Um, you know, I don't want to penalise you from seeing your grandchildren. They love you and they miss you. And work on your marriage. Uh, but I'd certainly ask your husband, did you only tell me about the affair? Did you only end the affair? Because I found out. Um, and you'll know your husband better than me. So watch out for his actions when he answers that question. Um, because that could have gone on for years. That could have gone on for years. And I do hope that you're able to fix your marriage. Okie dokie, dear Auntie Nelly. My girlfriend and I have been together about a year now. And I'm not sure I trust her. I found out that she lies about everything. And I mean everything. <laughs> so we had a talk at the kitchen table. And she promised me that she would stop lying to me. Okay. Things were good for a bit. Then I caught her in another big lie. We had to have another big talk and she promised again that she would stop. What's she lying about? Then yes, you guessed it. I caught her in another big lie. <laughs> ah, I just don't know what to do anymore. Please help. Okay. So you've been going out with your girlfriend for... No, oh, no. How long? A year. And all she's done is lie to you. But you've not actually said what she's lying about. So when you say she's lying about everything, does she mean like family, friends, a job, how much she has in bank, where she's been on holiday, what she does on a Thursday night, uh, she doesn't have false tits, she doesn't have her extensions, she doesn't have false nails. What are these lies? And when you say that you've caught her in another big lie... Is she a compulsive liar? Do you know enough about the girl to know whether you've actually got to know the girl? Or are, are, are you in love with? Have you fallen in love with? Are you going out with somebody who's just a persona of this person? Because if she's lying about everything, is she lying about herself? Does she even know who she is? Is it something that she's um, lived her life by doing? Does she not feel good enough in the person that she is? Is she not confident enough with who she is that she has to lie about everything to make it sound better or grander? Has she had an upbringing where, you know, she can't bring herself to be honest and say, I've had a really bad upbringing or, you know, my mum's this, my dad's that or I didn't get any GCSEs or, you know, maybe... It's all right saying, oh, she's a liar, get rid of her. Absolutely get rid of her. And I would actually say, you know, there's a problem here. If the girl can't lie straight in fucking bed, what are you doing in a relationship with her? Because there's no trust. But equally, unless she is an absolute compulsive liar and there's a massive problem with her that she needs to address, then why doesn't she trust you enough to be able to be honest with you? So I think... Um, you both need to have a sit down at the kitchen table here because this is going on once too often, like you said. And she promises and then she does it again. So I think it's a little bit of a problem here. I think this needs addressing and it needs addressing sooner rather than later. You can't be in a relationship with somebody who you can't trust because all they do is lie to you. 
no matter what she does and says, you know, it's like the boy that cries wolf, isn't it? You know, to, it's, he's gone on for far too long, you know, and ask her the question, put the ball in her court and just say, look, do you not trust me? Why can't you be honest with me? Why can't you trust me enough to tell me things? Why do you have to lie about things? And just explain to her that you can't be with somebody who lies all the time because there's no trust in your relationship. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, Linda Durant says, what happened? You went off. I have no idea, Linda, but I'm back now. But I'm back now. And I, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know, but I'm back. So... The Wi-Fi, something's gone wrong with bloody Wi-Fi. We're doing this on Friday though, when I did my live in the kitchen with mum on Friday, do you remember? Um, did you watch me on my live on Friday? I go live on a Friday afternoon from Ruby and Daisy. Let me turn you around and show you. You see there, I've got a clothes rail. So I've got my own little, cl oh fuck. I've got my own little clothes shop going on in the kitchen, where I go live on a Friday with my old new collection. So... I did it on Friday with mum and it kept doing it then, so I don't know, I don't know whether I've knocked summer or we've just got, it's been really windy, it has been extremely windy, so maybe summer's knocked, anyway, we're back now, let's go on, I don't know how I'm going to share this bloody video to YouTube, because there'll be two of them to stitch up and no, for fuck's sake, oh, if you've only just joined, um, I, I did apologise for night time and Ellie, so if you go and watch the other video you'll see what happened and then we'll just see a few months ago i started an affair with a man i had an affair with him 10 years ago back then i realized he wasn't going to leave his wife so i decided to end it and move on okay i got married to someone else and we were happy at first but i've always been in love with this man i'm having the affair with and it's affecting my marriage really fucking kill surprise my marriage is going downhill. I admit the problems in my marriage are probably because of my affair. Oh, yeah, God, you're so intuitive. Yeah. Okay, so he continually, though, comes up with reasons because she's asking him to leave wife and he's saying, I can't leave my wife because of finances, children, and now the pandemic. I do believe he loves me and wants to be with me and I love him, but the situation is so frustrating. I don't have any kids and I could leave my husband today. I know his wife a bit and know she can be difficult and cold. So I know all he, see, all he says to me is truthful. I just don't understand why he can't make the break so we can be happy together. What do I do? What you do is leave other people's husbands alone. They're out of bounds. They don't belong to you. Why don't you start looking after your own fucking husband? It didn't work 10 years ago, and it's not going to work 10 years on. Hello, hello, good morning. What the fucking hell? You're flogging a dead fucking horse. All you're doing is putting yourself in a situation to hurt yourself again and again. And you know his wife a bit, and she's a bit cold. Maybe she's a bit fucking cold towards you because she knows that you've got fucking eyes for a fucking husband. What about that? What about that? If you saw, is a woman walking around your husband, literally sticking a vagina in his face, you're going to be a bit cold towards her, aren't you? Eh? The fuck are you doing? Get on in life with your own husband. Stick on your own side at the fence. Water your own fucking flowers. And if there's no relationship there, then leave. Leave your husband to find somebody who's not going to cheat on him. And leave every fucker else's husband alone. Because he ain't going to leave his wife. Why should he? He's got his wife, he's got his kids, he's got his side dish, which is you. Eh? Sometimes you might be the appetizer. Sometimes you may be the main dish if wife's not putting out. But he ain't going to fucking leave his wife. It's all the same old excuses. Oh, I can't afford to leave her. Oh, the kids are too little. Oh, you know, I don't want to cause all this upset. It's not the right time. Oh, now the pandemic. Fuck off. If he wanted to leave his wife, he'd have done it fucking bastard 10 years ago. Not now. It ain't gonna fucking happen. So leave every fucker else's husband's alone and look after your own. And if you don't want to be in a relationship with your husband, tell him that it's over and let your husband go and find somebody who wants to be in a marriage with him faithfully because it don't sound like it's fucking you. 
You're comparing your husband to this fucking fuck boy from 10 years ago. Is his dick that fucking good? You're nothing but fucking dipmatized, sweetheart, and you need to move on. And you need to move on fast. Yeah, so I, I, I'm sticking up for, for other wife here because it's no wonder she's fucking cold towards you. She knows. Us women, we just know. I don't know why, but we just know. We know when there's a woman around our husbands who want to suck his cock. We know. I don't know why we know. We just do. Okay. We just do. So that's probably why she's a bit cold towards you. Yeah. We know. We know. I have a lot of male friends. A lot of male friends. And they have lovely girlfriends, lovely wives, and we all have a laugh and a joke, you know, and we can be really, really crude and lots of banter and that, but their wives and their girlfriends have never once felt intimidated by me. And do you know why? Because I know girl code, and girl code is, if it belongs to somebody else, that's where you leave it. You can look at somebody and think, fucking hell fire, he's, he's a handsome man, or he, God almighty, if I were 10 years younger, and that's where the conversation stops. That's where it stops. They belong to some fucker else. Leave them. Leave them there. <coughs> fucking ridiculous. It's right, wound me up, that's really wound me up. Eh, hey, bloody hell fire, that poor woman. Dear Auntie Nelly, feel, feel strange me calling you my Auntie Nelly. As I'm a woman in my late 60s. Well, that's all right. My flower pots are of all ages, all genders, from all over the world. You're very welcome. I've been seeing a man for about 18 months. Anyway, I need some brutally honest advice, and I know that's what you will do. Oh, heck. I'm divorced and he's widowed, and we met by chance dog walking. We started meeting up for walks and meals, and now we're a couple. We get on so well and we laugh a lot. I really see him in my future, but he still hasn't told his grown-up children about our relationship. His two daughters know we're friends and I've met them both, but he introduced me as a friend. They don't know we're in a romantic relationship. I understand it's sensitive as they lost their mother three years ago. I don't want to pressure him and ruin everything, but at the same time, I hate that it's a secret. I have one grown-up son who I've told everything and he's very happy. What do you think I should do? What is it you're asking here? Are you asking for him to ask you to be his girlfriend? You know, when he said, this is my friend. Hello, this is Vera, my friend, whatever you might be called. Everything that comes into the page is anonymous, so don't worry. Um, this is my friend. What did you want him to say? This is... You're in your late 60s, I'm presuming he could be in his late 60s. Is it a thing? Would you ask somebody if you want to be your girlfriend? You know, he's not going to write your name on his pencil case. Maybe that's him introducing you to his daughters as this is my friend because you are his friend. Maybe he doesn't think at your age, may, and I'm only saying maybe because we don't know, maybe he doesn't think at your age it needs to be like a progression of well, we've dated so many times, we're now exclusive, we don't speak to anybody else, we're not in a situationship, we're now in a relationship, he's asked me to be his girlfriend, he's given me a drawer in bedroom to put my bits in. Maybe it's just a different world to him now and he's doing the best he can with the tools that he has. So I'd have the conversation with him and say, look, I don't want to put any pressure on you and I'd hate anything what we've got now to end, but... You know, when you introduced me to your daughters and you said I was your friend, do you mean like I'm your friend or, you know, because to me, I see you as my partner, my boyfriend. Am I wrong for thinking that? So, you know, he's going out for walks with you, he's introduced you to his daughters, your son's really happy about it. Seems to me like you're trying to sabotage this relationship a little bit, you know, and sometimes I think patience is key. So I think... Take that little bit of advice I've given you and have the conversation of, well, when I introduce you to people, I tell people that you're my boyfriend, I've, and you said I were your friend, so I'm a right dick, aren't I? So, are you my friend or are you my boyfriend? And if he says, well, yeah, I guess I am your boyfriend, but we're just, well, 
Yeah, but y'all be friends, aren't you? He might feel daft saying this is my girlfriend if he's in his late 60s. And yeah, he could be being a bit sensitive. His wife died three years ago and he might not quite understand what to say to the girls. You know, he might not want to upset the girls. But I think you need to have the conversation. The chances are they've probably already worked it out for themselves. But that's the chances, isn't it? They've probably already worked out that dad's got a friend. Does it need to be? Does it have to have a label on it? Do you have to feel like that? I want to be able to tell everybody that this is my boyfriend. What's the rush? Where are you going? You're having a nice time, just as it is. So enjoy it for what it is. That's my advice. Be patient. But if it's really bothering you, have the conversation and say, I introduce you as my boyfriend and you introduce me as your friend. I'm sorry, just friends then. Because, um, you know, we do things that some friends don't. You know, go in it in a bit of a jokey way. If you feel that you need some sort of confirmation to know that you're the only one. And yes, you are his special friend. Yeah? Okie dokie. Okie dokie, karaoke. Um, thank you, Brenda Mums. Yes, it's Vegas Vault by Mac. Yes, very good. Very good. I did have a different one on this morning, but I had to change it because I look like I've been dug up. Oh, dear Auntie Nelly, by the way, this is the second Sunday service of the day because the previous Sunday service, uh, which is now posted to the page, I'm hoping, kept, kept breaking, it kept going off, it kept freezing, so, um, yeah, you got me twice, not really, it's still the same one, but like in two different bits. I don't know how it's going to upload to YouTube, I don't, I haven't got editing skills like that. Oh, fucking hell. Dear Auntie Nelly, I don't want to sound shallow when I say this. It's okay, because your Auntie Nelly is quite shallow. So you've come to the right place. I just don't fancy my husband anymore, because he's really let himself go. I don't know how to talk to him about it without upsetting him, but he's put on a lot of weight. It's dirty. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Am I your husband? Um, okay. He started in the first lockdown and his weight has just gone up and up. He's ballooned to 22 storm. He was 16. Wow, that's six storm. He asked why he don't have sex anymore. Oh, why we don't have sex anymore. But I just don't find him attractive anymore. I'm quickly running out of excuses. It's really affected our, our relationship, but I just don't want to say. And he seems oblivious. He was such a handsome man when I met him. That's what attracted me to him. I know it's shallow, but he was slim, tall, dark, handsome. Every girl's dream. But now he doesn't seem to care about his appearance anymore or his health. I feel really pissed off with him for letting himself go. Can you help? I don't want to be with somebody who doesn't care about themselves. I absolutely couldn't give a fuck if he were tall, short, dark, ginger, handsome, not so handsome. I'm a little bit bothered here about your husband's health and not just about his physical health but his mental health. Uh, lockdown has affected us all in different ways. We're all in the same boat but we're all fighting different storms. So has he been furloughed? Has he lost his job? What kind of things was he doing before that he's not doing now? Was he a gym goer and they've no longer, he can't go to the gym anymore? Did he like going playing darts on a Thursday and he can no longer meet up with his mates? You know, it sounds to me like there could be a little bit of depression going on here. And the fact that he's, you know, he could have put six stone on him weight, but he could still take, he could still try to keep up his appearance. Like today, I've coloured from some earring, I've uh, fallen into a box of Crayola, and I've arrived here for some disservice. Tuesday, I couldn't have done that. Wednesday, I couldn't have done that. Thursday, I couldn't have done that. Friday, took me all day to go live with Ruby and Daisy after lots of tears and tantrums. How he feels in himself would be my main concern here, not how he looks. We address the fact of the weight, but not how it's making you feel less attracted to him. So I think here what we need to do is speak to your husband and tell him that you recognise a change in his behaviour, not a change in his weight gain, the fact that he doesn't shave anymore or he doesn't shower or you recognise a change in his behaviour. 
okay? And you love him because you married him and you said you were so in love with him. Regardless, regardless of how we change um, over our marriage, we're never going to look like we did in our wedding day because we age. But the heart's still the heart and the soul's still the soul and the eyes will never change. So look into your husband's eyes and you'll see that man that you married and that you give the vows to in sickness and in health. And there's a little bit of sickness going on here. So yeah, you've come to me and said, I don't want to sound shallow. Well, you are doing. And I think your husband's health is absolutely paramount. And this is where you need to buckle down, sit him down at the hashtag kitchen table, tell him that you're really concerned about his health. Don't mention that he's put six stone on and that's why you don't have sex. You're really, really, really concerned about his health. You're really concerned about his mental health. And explain to him that once upon a time, you wouldn't have behaved like this. Once upon a time. So what's going on? What can I do to help you? In order to give him that little bit of comfort and support to know that it's okay to speak to you. Um, maybe he's trying to reach out to you in a way where he's saying, why don't we have sex anymore? Maybe that's his way of thinking. That's the way to be close to you. And you are pushing him away. So maybe he doesn't feel that he can communicate with you. Yeah? So I think it's about getting into his mind once you've actually found out what the problem is. Because we're, we, regardless of gender, I think we're all good at going, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. When really you're not. Like me on Tuesday, I wasn't fine. And I reached out and the doctor intervened. But if you'd have asked me Monday, I'd have gone, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine, thanks. How are you? You know, so it could be like that. So it's about coaxing that out of him. Not a sledgehammer approach. Coaxing it out of him. And seeing what is the problem is he worried about? Is he worried about when, you know, when lockdown's over? Has he got social anxiety? Is he worried about his job? You know, have you been on 80% and you're struggling to pay your bills? You know, what, what, is, what is the issue? Because it's affected a lot of people in a lot of different ways. So stop being so selfish. Because sometimes when we see a problem, that's all we see, the problem and how it affects us. So step out of your shoes and try and step in his a little bit and just try and understand what might be going on and that might be where he's turning to food uh, for comfort he's not going to the gym none of us are um at first i absolutely loved it i was like ha ha i don't have to go to gym now i'm like fuck sake i need to get back in that fucking gym even though i hate it that's what works for me so i think that's the way to actually proceed with this uh, with good care and attention for your husband because you love your husband and then try and manage that and keep asking, don't, if he turns around and says, there's absolutely nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong, don't think, oh, there's nothing wrong then, keep asking, keep asking, keep letting him, let him know that you love him so much, he can trust you, you know, you're there to support him. And then once you've got the reasons, if there is a reason, um, you know, then you can address the problems. But I wouldn't go in with, well, I don't want to have sex here because you put that much weight so I don't fancy anymore. <gasps> Can you imagine if somebody is not feeling... I mean, that would hurt anybody regardless, but you, that could really damage somebody's self-esteem, the confidence. You know, you don't want to go and say any of that at all. So, yeah, try it the way I said, and I wish you the best of luck there, I really do. And there's such a lot of us who have struggled in lockdown, struggled with lockdown one, lockdown two, lockdown three. Lockdown three has been a lot harder for me um, because it's been winter and I live alone and I'm shielding. And I see mum once a week when she's had a negative corona test. Um, it's tough. It's been tough and it is tough. Uh, and I don't lie about it. If you follow my Instagram stories, you'll see that I've really struggled this week. Um, you know, and I, I'm always very transparent. And I tell you all, if I'm having a good day, if I'm not having a good day. Because I am an international agony aunt. I write for Chat Magazine and That's Life Australia, That's Life New Zealand. And I do my night time in Ellie and I do my Sunday service. If I'm not feeling good, if I'm not feeling good, then how can I go live and help you? I can't even help myself. Um, so yeah, so I'm always very transparent with that and very brutally honest and I think it's so important for me to actually come and tell the audience, uh, use my platform to say, I've not been good this week, my mental health hasn't been good because then there might be somebody out there who goes, oh God, it's not just me, 
it's not just me. No, sweetheart, it's not just you. We're all in it together and just fighting different storms, but we're all in the same fucking boat, aren't we? And it is what it is, and it is a bit shit. But um, brighter days will come because this too will pass. I always think it doesn't rain forever. So that, that's what's getting me through. That's what's getting me through. Um, yeah, and uh, just reaching out and just saying, I'm not coping. And my coping strategies I normally have to make me cope are not working. So yeah, so I think it's, um, you know, stop being so selfish, um, thinking that it's all about you, because it's not, because it's not, there's everybody, it's all about everybody, each and every one of us um, is going through something. And even the ones who you think are flying through life and all, it's all right for them. Everybody's struggling, everybody is. So I'm praying here in the United Kingdom, we get some sort of dates tomorrow uh, from... Um, Boris and that might give people a little bit of, of hope I hope we don't come out of lockdown too quickly and then have to go into lockdown four because I don't know if I'd cope with another lockdown um, <laughs> I'm really struggling at the moment um yeah and uh, there we go so that's been today's Sunday service you've had me in two hot lots if you see two videos on the page it's because the first one just kicked me off and um, that's that so i've really enjoyed being with you all being well i'll be with you on wednesday evening for night time with nelly at nine o'clock it is an over 18 show it's strong language and talk of a sexual nature throughout so you have been warned and if anybody comments on your comments on this page with giveaway prize competition you've won something it's a scam get it reported ignore it and I'll see you all very, very soon. Have a cracking day.